Eritrea declared independence from Ethiopia in 1991, a move that was formally ratified in a referendum two years later. A subsequent border war with Ethiopia claimed more than 150,000 lives between 1998 and 2000. Although an agreement was signed, the issue continues to be a source of tension between the two countries and the long-running border dispute remains unresolved. Joining me now from the Eritrean capital Asmara is President Isaias Afwerki. Mr. President, on the occasion of the country's 17th independence anniversary. Uh, in your view, what are the achievements of Eritrea? Well, I would like to first of all start by saying the border dispute is resolved. It's not unresolved. The decision of the Boundary Commission six years ago, its decision to demarcate the border virtually and quit has closed the chapter. So I would uh, say there is no border issue, there is no conflict, there is no tension in the first place. To come to your question, 17 years of achievement in this country has been to first of all rebuild the country that was devastated by a very long and destructive war to start to build a nation put in place an infrastructure, create an environment for development, promote uh, social uh, programs in education and health. 17 years, despite the challenge and obstacles, has been an exciting experience for this country and this nation. And we can talk about achievements, and that may take a long, long time, but I can assure you Eritrea has achieved remarkably in the economic sector, in the social sector, and we can now say we are embarking on a new era where we would be in a position to exploit the natural endow endowments and resources of this country to give more impetus for our developmental programs. Uh, okay, I want to talk about that, uh, the exploitation of natural resources a little later in the show, but I just want to get back to that border issue. Now, that agreement, uh, which was uh, agreed to by the Border Commission, has not been implemented, has it? It is implemented, if you can understand what virtual demarcation means. Virtual demarcation has closed the chapter. Our border is demarcated more than any other border within this continent. And you can assume that uh, the border issue, the conflict, is resolved by this virtual demarcation. Now, what, is the, what are the chances of uh, Eritrea normalizing relations with Ethiopia? When our territory is occupied, despite the agreements, the decision given by the Boundary Commission, and now, as I indicated earlier, when we have the border demarcated virtually, the presence of occupation forces makes it impossible for any normalization of relationships. There are concerns, and these concerns have been expressed in the United Nations, that there could be more fighting between Eritrea and Ethiopia. This is mere speculation. Those who would like to distract the attention from the real issues would raise this matter time and again, but I don't see any ground for any eruption of tension or confrontation. You know, I want to get to uh, Eritrea's relationship with the United States. There have been accusations from the United States that Eritrea is a state sponsor of terrorism, that you support the Islamic insurgents in Somalia. Does that worry you? How many times have we heard this and how many lies have been told the last five or eight years and I think this is uh, 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 compromising again and again the credibility of the administration in Washington and uh, these shameless uh, lies repeated again and again have no weight whatsoever in what uh, the United States as far as Eritrea is uh, linkage with terrorism, which has become an impossible uh, fact to prove on the part of the United States, but you can hear these lies again and again, and 
I'm not surprised. We're not worried about these accusations. But the United States has also said that it could, it could label Eritrea a state sponsor of terrorism. That could have great conse grave consequences for your country. Not at all. No one is worried about these lies, baseless accusations, and you can imagine how many uh, governments, countries, and individuals have been accused of uh, linkage with terrorism when there are no facts on the ground. It's the same story as the weapons of mass destruction. It's the same pattern and trendy behavior we have witnessed all along, and no one in this country is worried about these accusations. You know, one of the accusations from the United States is that uh, Eritrea has supplied arms to the Islamic Courts Union in Somalia. Uh, have you supplied arms to that group? It looks like you're talking on behalf of the United States and the administration in Washington, and your uh, list of questions seems to be seem to be uh, uh, provided by I don't know someone in Langley or. Uh, the administration in Washington. I'm not bothered about these accusations. I can assure you these lies will be repeated again and again with no leverage on the ground. Okay, let's talk about your recent visit to Iran. Uh, what did that trip achieve? It's part of uh, the long-standing relationship with uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran. The early 60s, 70s, uh, the uh, present Islamic Republic of Iran and uh, the support, the moral support, the struggle of, for liberation in this country got from the uh, Iranian Revolution has been a landmark in the history of this country and bilateral ties with Iran and there was nothing new in this relationship. We can imagine going back three, four decades when Ayatollah Khamenei was uh, during Friday prayers praying for Eritrea and the freedom of Eritrea. And this visit comes as an expression of solidarity between Eritrea and Iran. Did you sign any agreements with the Iranians? Oh, about three, four agreements of cooperation. And what are you going to be cooperating in? In what fields? All fields. Agriculture, manufacturing, mining, trade, name it. Okay, now let's look at the domestic political situation in Eritrea. When are elections going to be held in Eritrea? The way elections scheduled for 2001, they didn't take place. When is that going to happen? What elections? Elections in Eritrea. We'll see what the elections in the United States will bring about and we will wait for about three, four decades until we see genuine natural situations in Eritrea. You think Eritrea is going to wait three or four decades before it holds elections? Maybe more, maybe more, who knows? But is that, it of course, depending on what you call elections, what you believe in elections, what you think in terms of elections, if you think elections are la elections we witnessed in Ethiopia, the elections in Zimbabwe, the elections in Jordan, the elections in Morocco, the elections in Kuwait, if you talk about those elections and the elections in Iraq and the elections in Afghanistan, like the uh, uh, process where the lawyer Jirga was brought about to form a government, if you're talking about these types of elections, I can tell you it may never happen. It may take decades. Well, aren't elections a central element of a democracy? And if you don't have elections, then you don't have a democracy. It depends on, on what you mean by democracy. If you really understand what democracy means, and if you're talking about genuine elections, that's another issue. If you're telling me that uh, the uh, democracy and the elections we have witnessed the last five or ten years, promoted by the United States as a separate agenda to serve its interests in a number of regions of this world, I can tell you these are not elections for us. This is not democracy for us. If you mean democracy is polarizing society vertically, that's not democracy for us. 
And these days, it become very fashionable for people to talk about democracy when society is divided and polarized along ethnic, religious lines, and we are not party to that kind of democracy. Well, are you prepared to tolerate any kind of opposition in Eritrea? What kind of opposition? Agents what? hired by the CIA from Langley or opposition from inside or well, any kind of opposition? There was something of a crackdown against the opposition by the Eritreans, by your government in 2001. Journalists Never. Not at, no, not at all. Not at all. You are disinformed. There has never been any opposition in this country. This is a total lie. And if you're talking about a political process, that is a different matter. If you're talking an opposition that has been fabricated and created,